Hello, good evening. Good evening, guys. How are you? Good evening. Hello, good evening. How are you doing today? How was your weekend? Okay, let's see, Mariana, how was your weekend? Very good, thank you. Very good. Okay, and what do you do, Mariana? What do you do yesterday or, well, Saturday or Sunday? I don't know. Um, I went to the El Mercadito. Oh, really? And, okay, and what, what do you do? Um, my mom works in... Your mom, Mari? Can you... I'm sorry, Mariana, I get in here. Hello. Hi, I can hear you, teacher. You can. What about now? Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. Yes, it seems that I had a bad connection uh, at that specific time. Okay. So, well, um, you were saying that you went to Mercadito and that your mom works there, right? Yes. She had. Um, how do you say emprendimiento? <laughs> Entrepre entrepreneurship entrepreneurship or she has started her own business right okay well that <laughs> <laughs> okay very good I'm, I'm glad to hear that i'm very happy for your mom sé lo que significa eso y me alegra mucho por su mami de verdad thank you teacher you're welcome okay what about you let's see carla carla how are you what do you do during the weekend uh, it was fine. I have to work a lot. Oh, really? What do you do? What were you working on? I'm I'm on business with my husband. Okay. I look and I sold the accessories uh -huh. uh, to car. Ah, okay. Accessories for cars. Okay, like yeah. uh, car parts. Oh, okay. Well, it sounds very interesting. I'm I'm glad to hear that. Okay, and and yes, actually. Uh, Cuando usted tiene su negocio, right, pareciera que no, pero es pesado. It's very hard, yeah, okay? Very hard. Yeah. And you end up very tired, right, on the yeah, weekend. We need to to leave the accessory to the customer. Oh, you have to deliver then. You have to deliver the, 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 the parts. Yeah. Oh, okay, very good. Well, uh, but hopefully, you know, things will get better and you will grow and you will be able to hire more people to work for you. You'll see. Ya va a ver que así será. Okay, so thank you. What about you? Let's see, Brian. What about you? What do you do during the weekend? How 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 did it go? Good evening. Teacher. Good evening. Hello. Um, my weekend, I stayed on my house. Okay. Up, up to date with the scores and mm -hmm. the things on the platform. Okay, very responsible. Okay, very yeah. responsible. Excellent. Also, also, I'm studying another course at the same time. Oh, and what are you studying, Brian? Logistics. Very good choice, Brian. Very good choice. Yeah. Uh, logistics and English are two things that will open doors for you. Right now, we got so many positions uh, in the logistic area and hopefully you will be able to get a very good job in the future, you will see. Yeah. I'm glad to hear that. And what else do you do? And playing Only with studying? my dog. <laughs> yeah, eating, watching movies. Okay, a little yeah. bit, uh, you dedicated um, a little bit of time for each activity, okay, and that's good. You have to balance, yeah. you have to balance everything, right? Okay, very good. What about, let's see, what about Rene? Rene Guevara, are you there? What do you do on the weekend? Tell me, share with the class. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Well, uh, well I week, uh, in, in the weekend, I studied, I cooked, and I don't know, I finished, I finished all, Activities. Okay. I have. Um, I did exercise in the weekend. Um, I 
I read a book. You read a book, and what book yes. did you read? What book did you read? And this, in this moment, uh -huh. I read. Um, I read, or I'm reading. I, I, I read it. Thank you. You're reading. Thank okay, you. very good. Uh, una vida en el cine. Oh, okay, very good. Is it interesting? Uh, yes, very interesting. Uh, the author is Salvadorian. Very good. Well, yeah, it's good to give a chance to a Salvadorian author. So I yes, hope yes. you enjoy your book, Rene. Thank you very much for sharing. What about Thank you, you, Monica? You're welcome. Monica, how was your weekend? What do you do? Tell me. Hi, teacher. Hi. Um, my teacher has been, my, I'm sorry, my weekend has been great. Um, oh, really? What asking. do you do? Um, it was, uh, it was just a, a pair of quiet days. Oh, <laughs> I, really? I stayed in my house all day long. Me too. And, ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, just, I don't know, uh, making my own, my own food and listening to music all day. Okay. Very good, Monica. Actually, you know, there's time for everything, right? There's time for everything, yeah. <laughs> and this is the time for you to enjoy yourself, right? For you to have fun, for you to take care of yourself. Because actually, when children come, when uh, you know partners come to our life, when responsibilities come to us, so things changed a lot, and we have to distribute our time, and, you know, distribute our attention with everything, right? So, well, I'm glad that you're able to, you know, to focus your your i uh, mean to focus your energy right and everything on you okay and that's something good okay i'm glad to hear that monica what about you let's see uh lester lester what do you do tell me uh, good evening good evening <coughs> lester hello hello uh well i i just um um uh, i I was working uh, the Saturday. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, and on Sunday I went uh, to eat with my with an old friend. Oh, really? And, yeah, and we Ooh. was speaking about our things and our jobs, our lives. We were getting up to date. Se estaba actualizando, así decimos con mi amiga. We're getting up to date, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Very good. I'm glad to hear that, Lester. Thank you very much. You were sharing some time with your friend. Okay, what about you, Luis? Luis Morales, how are you? What do you do on the weekend? Luis, hello. Are you there? What do you do on the weekend? Can you hear me? Hello? Luis, hello, can you hear me now? Sí, yo le escucho perfectamente, pero creo que no me escucha. Ahora sí. Hola, hola. Yes, hola, now sí. we can hear you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Perdón. Um, uh, good, good evening, teacher. Good, good evening, evening, everyone. I was visiting my family in Hilo Vasco. Okay. And, and next, uh, I was working and finishing my thesis. Your thesis, thesis project. Sorry. Excellent, very good. I'm going to type it in the chat. This is project, okay? This is project. Okay, very good, I'm glad to hear that. Luis, so you were busy, right? Pero ya es lo último, eso que se disfruta, porque ya va a terminar, right? You're about to finish. Yeah. You're, you're saying goodbye to all that stuff for, at least for now, because actually you in the, in the future, you can go ahead and decide to study something else, to study a master degree or a diplomado, right? So you you pick, right? Thank you very yeah. much, Luis. Thank you. You're welcome, okay? So one more person, let's see, let me listen to you. Kenya, Kenya Kandray, are you there? Yes. Hello, Kenya, what do you do? Tell me, how was your weekend? I I went to church. You went I to the church, okay. For the university exams, and I have started to learn to play the piano. Oh, really? That's cool. And do you like it? Do you like your first lesson? 
Yes. Excellent. I'm happy for you. One day, at, I hope I will be able to, you know, start learning, you know, how to play the piano because I think it's it's a very nice instrument. Dicen que es uno de los instrumentos más completos, right? So yeah, I would like to learn. Uh, I used to play violin. Oh, really? The violin? Excellent. Yeah. Okay, so you're adding more skills to your um, repertoire, right? Está agregando yeah. más este, habilidades a su repertorio. Excellent. Thank you very much, okay? So, guys, uh, la razón por la que les pregunto, y por supuesto, genuinamente estoy interesada en lo que han hecho este fin de semana, and I'm happy for all what you said, okay? Es porque quería revisar cómo vamos con Paz Simple. Remember that last week we started Paz Simple, right? Entonces, hay una cosa que he observado. Remember that when we use Paz Simple, we're talking about completed actions. Estamos hablando de acciones completadas. They have completed in the past. They have been completed in the past, okay? Cuando usamos pasado continuo, como I was visiting my parents, or I was working, right? Cuando yo utilizo pasado continuo, es porque yo voy a describir una situación. Como así, teacher. Bueno, por ejemplo, let's say I'm going to invent right now, okay? I'm going to invent. Let's say that I was sleeping. Bueno, vengo yo en la mañana y le cuento a mi mamá. Mom, you know what? I feel so sleepy today. Pero tengo tanto sueño, I feel so sleepy today. And why? The thing is that I couldn't sleep well. Why wouldn't you sleep well? Ah, because you know what? I was sleeping. And in the middle of the night, I've heard a noise. So I woke up and I opened the door. And there was someone, you know, uh, singing a song. And I didn't know who the person was. So suddenly, I, I took a bat with me, right? And I moved, right? And I went into the room and I was listening to that noise. And finally, I found out that it was my daughter, right, who was singing a song in the middle of the night. She was um, watching TV and she was singing the song from the TV show, okay? So when I'm doing that, cuando yo estoy describiendo algo que estaba en progreso o estaba sucediendo en el pasado, yo uso past continuous, right? ¿Se recuerdan? I was telling my mom, I was sleeping. Um, I was sleeping, all of a sudden I've heard a noise, or I was cooking, I was cooking when uh, someone called, cuando alguien llamó, when someone called, right, and I answered the phone, and it was my sister, and I was worried because she told me that she had an accident, she's fine, but she told me that she had an accident, entonces, be careful with that, cuando hablamos de past, usamos past simple, acciones que ya han sido completadas, right, very good. So let me go ahead and share my screen, porque hoy vamos a hablar de las últimas secciones, ¿verdad? Oh, give me one more. De las últimas secciones, porque nos quedó todavía algo pendiente de section three. Teacher, ¿y cómo vamos a hacer esta semana? ¿Qué es lo que vamos a trabajar esta semana si lo que se ve es el midterm? Recuerden, vamos a ir a... Aquí lo anoté yo. We said... We said that we're going to be working semana uno, o sea, la semana pasada, tuvimos que haber trabajado sections one, two, and three. Prácticamente cubrir todos esos temas y completar los ejercicios. But, pero, esta semana, week number two, we're going to be working on all the, the questions, right? Todas las preguntas que usted tenga de sections one, two, and three, las vamos a estar trabajando esta semana. Quiere decir que si usted de repente no ha podido completar algún ejercicio de la semana 1, esta es nuestra semana para meta para completar eso. ¿okay? ¿Qué tenemos que hacer también? Tenemos nuestro midterm test. Teacher, ¿y cuándo vamos a ver, vamos a ver si vamos a discutir si hay alguna, alguna interrogante o alguna situación ¿verdad? con el midterm test? Si yo no lo he entendido. Ah, ese día va a ser el jueves. Para el jueves, chicos, ustedes lo que tienen que hacer es venir a la clase y traer todas las dudas, todas las preguntas que de repente ustedes se encontraron ahí en el midterm test. ¿Por qué? Porque las tenemos que ir viendo. De hecho, ese jueves nuestra clase se va a llamar midterm test. Ok, ese va a ser nuestro tema. Así que desde ya les digo, usted lo puede empezar a trabajar sin ningún problema, ¿verdad? Y luego eh, vamos a poder eh, con contestar cualquier duda que usted tenga, ¿verdad? Eh, le recomiendo que si es posible lo haga. Recuerda que en este caso ustedes ya son conocedores y de repente dejar una sección incompleta saben que pueden regresar y terminarla, ¿verdad? No, no hay ningún problema. Así que 
having said that, después de haber dicho eso, let me move on to the class you spread with me. And let me open this up. Also, there was a topic, no, no ahora, porque hoy quiero terminar lo que no hemos completado la semana pasada, pero sí voy a ocupar un tiempito para eh, ver también lo de las internet questions. No sé cuántos de ustedes eh, se pusieron ahí a trabajar en los links extras que le mandé. Si no lo hizo, no se preocupe. Igual vamos a tener un review. Ok. Going to share my screen right now. Toward my team. There we go. Okay, guys. So this is class or session number five. Okay, session number five. Can you see my screen? Can you see the PowerPoint presentation? Can no. you see the? What about now? Ahora? Yes. 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 Very good. Excellent. Okay. So let me ver el chat acá. If someone is typing. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Excellent. So. Let me go ahead and uh, continue. Today is October the 19th, right? And all what we're going to do is in here, okay? So the very first thing that I want to ask you is what is an adjective, right? What is an adjective? Well, an adjective is a word or phrase naming an attribute added to or grammatically related to a noun to modify or describe it, right? Now, in Spanish, right? In Espanol, lo mismo, ¿verdad? Los adjetivos son los que nos sirven para darle atributos al nombre, right? For example, we have this little girl, little girl, I'm sorry, we have this little girl, and we're going to say some things, good things about her, okay? Now, in este caso, girl es el nombre, Right, it's a noun. Like if I say flower, it's a noun. Water, bottle, right, container, telephone, a teacher, right, is a noun, okay? But adjectives are the things that we say about that particular object, person, or thing, right? So when I talk about this little girl, little girl, I'm sorry, ando, así como un poco twisted my tongue, okay? I can say that the girl is beautiful, right? Or I can say that the girl is intelligent, right? Or I can say that the girl is clean and that she's jealous, right? Or that she's friendly, right? So all those words are adjectives, right? That help me describe this little girl. Okay, entonces, ¿qué es un adjetivo? An adjective is a word or phrase naming an attribute, or it's something that describes the noun. Es lo que describe al nombre, right? So that is an adjective. Very good. Now, in the platform, in the platform, there was a section, right? Uh, that is called evaluations and comparisons. Evaluations and comparisons, right? So that is in section number three. Right, because actually we have two pending topics from section three, okay? So we got evaluation with adjectives, evaluation with adjectives, okay? So wow, what's that? Yeah, we evaluate something, right, with adjectives. Now, on the video that you had available in the platform, there was an explanation, right? And I used that explanation so I could bring um, some uh, notes, right, to the class. So evaluations with adjectives, we got some examples, it says, Apartments aren't big enough for families, right? I'm not strong enough to lift this box, or it isn't warm enough to go for a swim. Apartments are too small, right, for pets, or this box is too heavy for me to lift, right, or, the, it, or it's too cold to go for a swim. Now, Let's go ahead and see how it works in Spanish, right? Because actually we need to have an idea on how it works in Spanish, right? Los apartamentos no son 
lo suficientemente grandes para las familias. Y si se fijan en español, todavía más enredado, ¿verdad? Los apartamentos no son lo suficientemente grandes para las familias, right? Or I'm not strong enough to lift this box. No soy lo suficientemente fuerte para levantar esta caja, right? Entonces, I am evaluating with comparison, right? ¿Qué estoy evaluando? Pues mi, for mi fuerza, no soy tan fuerte como usted pensaría para levantar esta caja, ¿verdad? It isn't warm enough to go for a swim. No está tan caliente o tan cálido el clima para ir a nadar, ¿verdad? Entonces, o para ir a, ¿qué? A la piscina, ¿verdad? Right? nadar. Entonces, pero lo que puedo hacer yo también es utilizar to y prácticamente pues estaría diciendo lo mismo. Pero, en este caso, lo haría de forma eh, diferente, ¿verdad? Apartments aren't too small for pets. Apartments aren't too small for pets. O sea, no, los, no son tan pequeños para las, para las mascotas. This box is too heavy for me to lift. Demasiado pesada. Or, it's too cold to go for a swim. Demasiado. Entonces, decíamos, en español, la primera estructura, ¿verdad? Es cuando yo digo, no es lo suficientemente... And then the adjective, right? Es que, um, por ejemplo, el, 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 el container o el recipiente no es, tan, no es lo suficientemente grande para guardar la salsa. Por ejemplo, the container is not big enough, you know, for the sauce, right? Or to pour the sauce, right? Entonces, ahora bien, ¿cuál es la estructura, verdad, que veíamos? Nos quedaría de esta forma, ¿ok? Evaluations and comparison. Evaluations with adjective using enough and to. Entonces lo vamos a dividir con dos secciones. Uno que yo lo voy a utilizar para hacerlo con enough, que en español es suficiente, and one with two, que es demasiado. Right? Entonces, when I want to use it, I'm going to do it like this. Okay? Si se fijan, tenemos aquí otros ejemplos. Right? I got my subject. I got my verb, I got my adjective. Aquí en esta parte entre el adjetivo y lo que estoy comparando, aquí es donde va la palabra enough or to. ¿Ok? Apartments aren't big enough for families. Or apartments aren't spacious enough for families. Or apartments aren't comfortable enough for families. ¿Ok? Entonces, aquí es donde yo voy a colocar cada uno de mis elementos en la forma correcta. ¿Ok? And let's do something. Vamos a hacer algo. Vamos a compartir esto con ustedes. ¿Ok? Just give me one moment. Let me share with you through the chat. Ay, pero no tengo el chat open. Bueno, ya vamos a ver. Ay, pero se ve eso. Ok. Evaluation with. Ok. Give me one moment. I want to share this with you so you can have the formula. And I'm going to open the chat so I can send it to you in just a moment. Okay, mientras carga voy a seguir con la explicación. Okay, so, so far so good. Todo bien hasta el momento? So far so good? Yes, yes, teacher. Excellent. Okay, ahí les dejo la frase por si les sirve. So far so good. Todo bien hasta el momento, ¿verdad? Ahí está. Very good. So let's continue. Now, uh, here we have another way to compare. Recuerden, aquí estábamos viendo con enough and to, right? Enough and to. Y dijimos que uh, first we got the subject, then we got per B, then we got adjective, then we got enough and to plus the, what I'm comparing, right? Okay. Now, let's go ahead and move to the next one. This one is a little bit different. Oh, and again, aquí es lo suficientemente, luego el adjetivo, o demasiado cuando uso to. Pero, ¿qué sucede con el otro? Okay? Comparison with adjectives, right? I got houses aren't as convenient as apartments. Or automatic transmission isn't as good as manual transmission. O sea, estamos hablando de carros. ¿Verdad? El automatic transmission es el um, automático y el manual transmission es el 
que conocemos como un carro mecánico estándar. ¿verdad? Give me one moment. It's loading. Ok, aquí está. Just let me look for the chat. Where is the uh, intermedio? Acá está. Ok. There you go. Uy, ahí había escrito a alguien, ya la vamos a responder. Sí. ¿Ya lo recibieron? Yes. Very good. Just let me answer to the girl. Aprovecho ahorita porque luego ya me pongo a hacer otras cosas and then I forget. Ahí está. Okay, so very good. So this one is a little bit different, right? Eh, este es el famoso tanto como, right? Tanto como, okay? Entonces, for example, if I want to uh, say this in Spanish, that would be, las casas no son tan conveniente como los apartamentos, tanto como, right? And this is very important that you know how it works in Spanish, right? Porque algunas veces nos cuesta entenderlo en inglés porque no sabemos cómo lo utilizamos nosotros en español, okay? Así que, houses are just as convenient as apartment, right? Or automatic transmission is just as good as manual transmission, okay? En este caso, es... Un, es una comparación positiva, la anterior era una comparación negativa, right? Entonces, yo digo, houses aren't as convenient as apartments, las casas no son tan convenientes como los apartamentos. Pero abajo dice, las casas son tan convenientes como los apartamentos, ¿ok? Entonces, you have to keep that in mind, right? For you to use these um, structures in a proper way. Vaya, pero ¿cuál es la fórmula? En este caso, teacher, ¿cómo voy a utilizar este? ¿Cómo, ¿Cómo voy a saber qué elementos van en cada sección? Well, it is like this, right? So, subject, I need my subject, verb B, then I need as, plus my adjective, plus as, and a noun, right? ¿Por qué? Porque yo estoy haciendo ahí la comparación de ese noun, right? So, houses aren't as convenient as apartments. Al principio va una de las cosas que estoy comparando because I'm comparing houses and apartments, right? So houses aren't as convenient as apartments, right? So we have to be careful with that. And I'm going to share this too, okay? I'm going to share this one too. Just give me some seconds. Okay, let's see. Got this one. And here you go. Very good. So there you have the second one, right? So uh, we got evaluations and comparisons, but with as, adjective as, right? Very good. Now let's get some examples. Okay, we got comfortable, we got convenient, we got dangerous, we got dark, bright, expensive, huge, small, inconvenient modern, noisy, private, quiet, safe, small, spacious, right? So what I want you to do is the following, because actually, oh well, let's go ahead and, and see this and then we're going to move to, to, to the exercise, but I'm going to come back here porque vamos a necesitar estos adjectives. So I'm going to share them with you too. It will take me just some seconds, okay? Ahí está, I'm going to take them, I'm going to send them here, okay? There you go. Okay, so we're going to need them. Ya lo vamos a necesitar, okay? So then it says evaluations and comparisons, okay? Evaluations and comparison. Let's see, someone is typing in the chat. Okay, very good. So apartments don't have enough parking space. Now, teacher, ¿y esas por qué son así? Porque esas no llevan el verbo to be, okay? If you see, I'm using present simple, right? En las otras estaba usando verb to be. Apartments don't have enough parking spaces, right? Or I don't have enough money to buy a new car, right? I don't have enough money to buy a new car, right? Entonces aquí si ya enough, 
enough, entonces ya lo puedo utilizar como ese adjetivo, right? Suficiente. Es que, teacher, I don't have enough time. I don't have enough time to rest. Or, teacher, I don't have enough um, time to, to do my homework, right? So there are so many examples that we can get. Or then, down below, you have, this soup has too much salt in it. Or, new cars cost too much money, right? So I'm talking about negative, right? A present simple and enough. And then I got too much, demasiado, right? And then enough, suficient. Now let's see. Comparisons with nouns, okay? Comparisons with nouns. Habían, habían bastantes ejemplos. Esta información la pueden encontrar en el video, right? Si usted quiere escuchar la explicación nuevamente, you can go online and you can um, also watch the explanation on the video, right? So apartments have just as many rooms as houses, right? As much as. Ok, en este caso de forma afirmativa. Los apartamentos tienen tantas habitaciones como las casas. Siempre es tanto como, pero este es de forma afirmativa. Ok, si me voy hacia atrás, si se fijan acá, houses aren't as convenient as apartments. So I'm using a negative comparison, right? But then here I'm using something positive, right? Pero, ok, pero estoy usando as many, as much, right? As many, sabemos que va, many va con countable nouns. As many rooms. Can I count rooms? Yes, I can count them. Much, much va con uncountable nouns. Can I, can't, can I count privacy? Mm -mm, no, I can't, right? So that's why I'm using as much privacy as houses, right? Now, eh, before I move here, porque si es el otro tema, no sé si vamos a alcanzar a terminarlo, but let's go back, let's go back. So these are the uh, formulas for those, right? Aren't as convenient as apartments. Uh, here we have this structure and I will share it with you. Se las voy a compartir también en el chat. Okay. Para que tengan los ejemplos. Teacher, ¿cómo uso los ejemplos? Fíjense de que yo siempre, siempre recomiendo que cuando de repente sintamos una duda sobre cómo funciona algo, lo más importante es ver cuáles son los elementos que esa estructura tiene. Por ejemplo, si yo tengo estas, estos ejemplos, lo que voy a comparar con, mis, con los que yo vaya a realizar es que los elementos vayan incluidos, que estén incluidos, ¿verdad? Entonces, tenemos comparisons con nombres y con adjectives, ¿verdad? Tenemos comparisons con nombres, uy, este ya no, y con adjectives. Vamos a regresar, chicos. Bye. Eh, the comparison with adjectives va a incluir todo lo que está acá, ¿verdad? Subject, verb, be, adjective, and of, or to, and comparison. Esta es la fórmula para cuando yo voy a hacer evaluation, perdón, evaluation con and of and to. ¿Ok? Este es un tema, evaluation con enough and to, y esta es mi fórmula. Pero luego tengo yo comparisons, comparisons with adjectives. Si usted se fija, lo que va entre as, as, is an adjective, right? So I gotta be careful with that, it's an adjective. Ok, then, let me move this one here and this one here. Now, Then, uh, down below, you have the same, but it's just affirmative, right? It's just something positive, okay? Houses are as convenient as apartments, right? So, that's going to be comparisons with adjectives. And then I got this formula, okay? This will be my formula. Aquí donde dice verb to be, it could be affirmative or it could be negative, right? So, it is up to you how you want to make up your sentence, okay? And then, tenemos evaluations with nouns, ¿ok? Las dos anteriores son para adjectives y estos son para nouns. ¿Pero por qué, teacher? Porque en realidad lo que estoy resaltando es el nouns. Por ejemplo, I don't have, apartments don't have enough parking spaces. 
¿Qué es lo que no tienen? ¿Qué es lo que no tienen en este caso lo suficiente, verdad? Es el parking space. I don't have enough money to buy a car. ¿Qué es lo que no tengo? ¿Verdad? En este caso, money, right? To buy a car. I'm broke, okay? Then, eh, what, what I'm going to highlight is going to be the noun, right? Down below. This soup has too much salt in it, right? This salt has too much salt in it. Too much salt or too many, and then you can say the word, right? Too many books. You have too many books on that shelf, right? So these are evaluations in comparison with nouns and comparisons with nouns, right? So do you have any questions? Hay alguna pregunta? Any questions? Veamos acá, chicos, si les compartí todo. Quiero ver. Vaya, les compartí this one. Ahí está ya. Then I shared this one. Esto porque lo vamos a utilizar. <coughs> Evaluation with nouns. Sí, ahí está. Evaluation with nouns y comparison with nouns. Ok, very good. Entonces, la razón por la que los se los compartí es porque los vamos a necesitar en este momento. What I want you to do is the following. Pero primero quiero saber, ¿tienen preguntas? Do you have questions? ¿Hay alguna duda? O practicamos y luego vamos evacuando las dudas. ¿Les parece? Tomar eso como un sí. <laughs> Okay, I would take that as a yes, right? I'm going to take a, I would take that as a yes. <laughs> okay, very good. We take that as a yes. Excellent. So let's go ahead and make up some examples. Uy, creo que a Carlita se lo mandé. I'm sorry, Carlita, era para todos, perdón. Wait to... That's okay, don't worry. <laughs> okay, thank you. I see to everyone. I would say that as I yes. Very good. So what we're going to do is the following. What I want you to help me with is with examples. Okay. Ahí los tienen en el chat. Ahí tienen las estructuras. What are you going to do? You're going to use these adjectives. Okay. I want you to please write one sentence per structure. Okay. Como así, teacher. Yes. Go to the chat. Y ahí tienen comparison with adjectives. Una con enough, una con eh, two, ¿verdad? La primera, the first picture, right? So, evaluations with adjectives using enough and two. Ahí nos van a salir dos ejemplos, right? Luego una con as, as, right? That would be number three. Luego una con enough, evaluation with nouns, that would be number four. And then evaluation with nouns, with as many as, okay? Bye. What are you going to do? You're going to type your sentences in the chat, pero no las envíe una por una. Escriba all your sentences y luego me las comparte en el chat. No se preocupe si se equivoca. Don't worry at all, okay? Aquí las vamos a ir chequeando. Así que go to your, to your computer and type, please, the uh, your examples. Type your sentences, okay? So please go ahead and do that. And I will give you, well, let's take five minutes, ¿verdad? Pero igual, aquí estoy yo, pregúnteme. O si no me quiere preguntar, aquí estoy, eh, escríbeme al chat, ¿verdad? Aquí en el, the Zoom, okay? So you can go ahead and, and let me know. Ok, aquí me están mandando unos ejemplos, veamos. Uh -huh. Muy bien, Carla. The second one, let's see. Ok, aquí en the second one es don't, Carlita. Pero aquí se lo voy a mandar yo. Don't have. Ok, ahí está. Ahí se lo mandé, Carlita, ya se la corregí. Ok, so you can type your sentences in the chat, ok? Very good. You're welcome, Carla. So please type, type in the chat. Si las quiere mandar privadas, también puede hacerlo. Carlita sí lo hizo. Or you can go ahead and send it to everyone. Ok, but you can have your five minutes. Me estaba escribiendo alguien, pero no sé si es de nosotros, de este grupo.
everybody type them in your chat. Okay, let's see. <laughs> okay, Rene, the first one is correct. The bed isn't big enough to sleep. Okay, good job, Rocio. <laughs> good job, Luis. Yeah, it's true, right? Yeah, uh, I, I would say that as a correct sentence. Good job, everyone. Right, pero quiero seguir viendo todas las demás estructuras, okay? Very good, very good. Apartments went. Let me check that one. Hmm. Enough. Mm -hmm. Apartments are insufficient enough for families. Houses aren't aren't too safe. Okay, too safe. Study English. <laughs> yeah, Rocio, that's true. Let's see, Brian. Currents aren't so dangerous as motorcycles. Yeah, I agree with that. My house isn't big enough to have another dog. I'm sorry to hear that. And the pool isn't as good as the beach. Okay, very good examples. Thank you very much, Brian. You can continue, guys, with your examples. I got Carla, I got Rene, I got Rocio, I got Luis, I got uh, Kenya, I got uh, Brian too. So I don't know if someone else is missing, right? Tighten in the chat, tighten in the chat, please. Okay, but is it clear? Let's see, the buses aren't as convenient as cars, of course, that's public transportation, right? The computers aren't as expensive as a house, okay? My cell phone, my cell phone doesn't. My cell phone doesn't have enough memory space, okay? My cell phone doesn't. Good job. My cell phone doesn't have. Remember that we used, uh, no, don't worry, don't worry. It's okay, Erika, good job, okay? No se preocupe. We use do, go, well, do or don't, okay? Do or don't with, um, with I, you, we, they, and plural nouns, okay? And we use does or doesn't, right? With he, she, it and singular noun, singular nouns, take singular nouns, say send a chat, okay? It is just as dangerous as chromium. What is that noise? Okay, what about the rest? What about the rest? Okay, the milk, or milk, in este caso sin el the, just milk in general, but I say general, milk isn't as tasty as coffee. Of course, I agree with you, Rene. <laughs> milk isn't as tasty as coffee. This car doesn't have enough space, okay, or enough room, enough room for people. A poison apple is more dangerous than eating one without poison. <laughs> yeah, Danny, that's true. Solo recuerde ver la estructura que estamos viendo, las compartí en el chat, ¿ok? They are in the chat. Puedo utilizar cualquiera de las que están en el chat, no hay problema, ¿ok? But, well, 
let's do something. Let's have some homework, okay? What I need you to do again for tomorrow is to write more sentences because I'm going to ask you, right? Le voy a preguntar mañana, okay? So you can have them ready para que no los agarren curva, okay? Um, so let's go ahead and check the last topic. ¿Por qué? Porque ya esta semana tenemos que terminar toda la primera sección, segunda y tercera, and this topic is uh, in the third section, okay? Bueno. Pero no hay preguntas, chicos, algo que contestar antes de pasar este tema, o todavía no. <laughs> okay, no yet. Okay. Si no hay preguntas, let me move on to this topic. Okay. So that's going to be use wish plus past tense to refer to present wishes, right? Use wish plus past tense to refer to present wishes, right? En español, eh, nosotros también lo utilizamos. Probablemente no, ex, no eh, con la misma, eh, los mismos elementos que ellos tienen, pero lo hacemos. De repente nosotros decimos, ay, desearía estar acostado. O, ay, desearía estar comiéndome un helado. O desearía estar comiéndome un sándwich, right? Ahorita las tripitas de algunos han de estar chillando, por cierto, I'm sorry. Eh, o, bueno, desearía poder tener, ¿qué? Eh, más dinero, ¿verdad? Para comprarme un nuevo teléfono, una tablet, a new computer, I don't know. Entonces, uh, esa es la forma en la que nosotros expresamos wish o deseo, right? Then, we got, we got some examples, okay? We got, I live with my parents. And this information, you can find it in the video. Pueden buscarla en el video que está en la sección 3, ¿verdad? De, de la plataforma. Eh, I live with my parents. Okay, now the sentence is, I wish I didn't live with my parents. Probably the person has, you know, some, I don't know, differences, right, with his parents or her parents, and he or she doesn't feel comfortable, right? Depende, ¿verdad? Si llevamos bien con nuestros papás, no creo que diríamos, I wish I didn't live with my parents, ¿verdad? Pero... Al principio, when we are with them, cuando estamos con ellos, decimos, es que yo quisiera vivir solo, es que desearía ya tener mi casa, desearía ya no estar aquí. Pero cuando ya no vamos, ¿verdad? Y nos enfrentamos con la vida, vienen las lagrimitas por aquí. I wish I, I wish I were with my parents. Desearía estar con mi papá. Y ya cambia el, el, el cassette, ¿verdad? Así que, eh, but the, 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 probably the person is having problems with her or his parents. Y dice, I wish I didn't live with my parents. Why? Because we're always, always arguing. Siempre estamos discutiendo, but we're always arguing. And they are always complaining about what I do. They don't let me go out at night. And then you name it. Usted haga la lista, right? And then it says, I wish I had my own apartment. Desearía tener, verdad, mi apartamento. Ahora bien, these wishes are for present wishes. Okay, porque también hay otra estructura para hablar de algún deseo en el pasado que ya no puedo cambiar. But these are wishes that I have in my present, right? Okay, so in my case, teacher, what are some of your wishes? Well, I wish I had money to buy a better computer, right? I wish I had more time to read. I wish I had more time to do some crafting activities, right? Or I wish I didn't, I wish I didn't spend too much time watching Netflix, okay? Por supuesto, no, ni siquiera me quedo tiempo de ver Netflix. I'm, I'm lying, but, uh, but you express, you express and throw your wishes that way, okay? Then life is difficult, of course. Oh, gracias por recordándoselo, right? Life is difficult, okay? So, I wish it were easier. Now, pay attention to this. After wish, where is used with all pronouns. Con todos. Yo no voy a decir, I wish I was. I wish she was. Voy a decir, I wish I were. Vean lo que dice ahí. After wish... 
where is used with all pronouns. Ahí, gracias a Dios, no hay que pensar en el third person singular, ¿verdad? Y es lo mismo para todos, ¿ok? Entonces, I wish it were easier. Por supuesto, of course, right? We know that life is difficult and we wish it were easier, but it is not, right? That's the point, right? That's the fun. Es lo que trae la diversión. So, I wish it weren't so difficult, right? I wish it weren't so difficult. So, you can use it in affirmative or negative form, okay? Teacher, pero bien, ya lo entendí, ¿verdad? Esto es para expresar mis deseos en el presente. Así es. Ahora, aquí es donde se junta lo que hemos visto con este tema. Why? Because we were talking about simple past, ¿ok? Se recuerdan que yo les traje la formulita, ¿verdad? Que dijimos que las oraciones afirmativas son las que llevan el past simple. Pero si es negativa, como yo uso mi auxiliar, mi verbo va en base form. Así que yo ya no tengo que modificarlo porque es como si yo dijera, I didn't went. Es como que estuviese diciendo lo mismo dos veces. That's not possible, right? So, I didn't go. Why? Porque ese tiran ahí le está diciendo la, a mi, bueno, en este caso la persona que me está tomando el mensaje, ¿verdad? Que número uno que es eh, negativa y número dos que es en pasado, ¿ok? Entonces lo mismo va a suceder aquí. Como yo expreso mis deseos en presente usando simple past, el verbo, si la, mi, mi, mi oración es afirmativa, debe ir en past. Si es negativa, voy a usar didn't más el verbo en forma base. Pero si yo voy a usar el, el verb to be, aquí no va a haber tales de was or wasn't or where and weren't. No, aquí solo hay dos. Es where or weren't. And that's it. Ok. Entonces, si voy a usar el simple paso verb to be, that's going to be this way. Ok. So, pero ¿qué sucede si yo quiero utilizar otros modal verbs o verbos modales? En este caso, como can't. Bueno, la ventaja es que can't tiene su pasado. Y en este caso, o sea, no es que tiene su historia, no, ¿verdad? es que tiene su forma en pasado y que solito puede hacerse positivo o negativo. Pregunta, o sea, usando un verbo siempre, ¿verdad? Un verbo eh, principal. So I say, I can't move out. So I wish I could move out, right? Pues sí, porque yo quisiera irme a volar, ¿verdad? But I don't have the money, I don't have the job, I don't have the income, I don't have anything, right? So, I wish I could move, but I can't, right? Entonces, como can't, el pasado de can't, or can, es could or couldn't. Entonces, si yo expreso un deseo, así de esa forma, ¿verdad? Y necesito usar can't or can, lo voy a usar en pasado, que sería could or couldn't. ¿verdad? Y luego si de repente, ¿verdad? Bueno, veamos la oración. Dice, my parents won't stop worrying about me. My parents won't stop worrying about me. Y por supuesto, nosotros los papás nunca nos vamos a dejar de preocupar por nuestros hijos, right? Pero lo interesante es que will tiene también su forma nega, su forma en pasado. De hecho, would es la forma eh, pa, eh, pasado de will déjeme abrir el chat se lo voy a digitar acá oops let's see where is it chat chat, chat. where is the chat sí. aquí está ok entonces dijimos will verdad el pasado de will es would verdad y luego tenemos will not or Want y el pasado de will not or won't sería would not or wouldn't. Bueno, generalmente nosotros lo usamos como dos cosas diferentes, ¿verdad? Will and would, pero esa es la forma también gramatical de, de llamarles, ¿ok? Así que you can use that, right? You can go ahead and use that or you can... Um, I'm sorry, you can use the past simple, right? The past simple. Let me see. Aquí está. Okay. Entonces, I will share this with you. So, los voy a compartir en el chat. Just bear with me. Give me one moment. Pero, chicos, so far so good. So far so good. ¿Alguna pregunta hasta el momento? No questions. Apagamos un examen. 
No, mentira. Let's see. Ahí está, chicos, the info. And then, let's see, let's see. Vamos a ver la fórmula. Ok, the formula. Si ustedes se fijan, bueno, no sé. ¿Qué dicen ustedes? De, de repente digo yo, ¿cuáles son los elementos? Ah, voy al chat y veo cuál es la fórmula que dijo la teacher, right? Entonces, this, this, is, this is the formula. This is the formula, right? So, subject plus wish plus subject plus main, I mean, plus verb in past and plus the complement, okay? Entonces, I wish I didn't live with my parents. I wish I didn't live with my parents, right? I wish I didn't have, I wish I didn't have a lot of homework to do. I wish I didn't have homework to do. Or I wish I, I wish I had, I wish I had more time, right, to spend with my family. Or I wish I could, I wish I could study at the university. But now I can't because I'm working and I'm working until late and I have so many things to do and now I have a family, I have a kid, so I wish I could study at the university, but I can't. Or I wish I wish I I wish I could go to the United States. I wish I could go to the United States, but now I can't because I don't have money or because we have the coronavirus pandemic all over the world or because I'm afraid of traveling, etc. right? So this is going to be the formula, okay, for those particular sentences. Now, what am I going to do? What I'm going to do tomorrow, and I'm going to write it down, otherwise I will forget it. I will just say, just saben que yo trabajo durante el día, así que I need to write down things, okay? So I'm going to um, write down some exercises, right? I'm going to share with you some exercises about the topics that we studied today, okay? Por supuesto, lo que yo les mando, esas son las worksheets online. No sé cuántos de ustedes ya las están trabajando. Esas son extra, ¿verdad? Para cuando usted tenga tiempo, para cuando usted de repente diga, no, y si tengo chance de practicar, ya terminé la plataforma, ahora me voy a pasar a esos ejercicios que la teacher nos comparte. Cuando tenga tiempo, hágalo, porque hay algo que es bien cierto, entre usted más practique, pues más, más eh, fluency you're going to have, you're going to learn more vocabulary, right, etc. Hoy fui yo la que habló bastante, pero mañana, como ya explicamos los temas, es el turno de ustedes, ¿verdad? Así que for tomorrow, be ready. Ok, get ready, study, porque vamos a seguir con este tema. Solo déjenme compartir esto acá. Por si en dado caso alguien que no vino a la clase, pues ahí les queda la info, right? Ok. Entonces, ¿qué otra recomendación? Guys, practice the simple past of verbs. Ok. Yo me atrevería a decir que una de las formas en las que un native speaker o las que una persona que habla en inglés nos nota así, pero así que no, que nos cuesta es cuando nos agarran así con el simple past, ok. Todo lo que tenemos que hacer es aprendernos los verbos de memoria. Si hay verbos que nosotros no los sabemos, no los conocemos, entonces hay que aprenderlos. Entre más verbos yo me aprenda, más vocabulario voy a tener para poder expresarme en simple past, ¿ok? Entonces, si, es, si son regular verbs, sabemos que tenemos que aprenderlos de memoria. Y si no, sabemos que tenemos que aprendernos las reglas. Si no las tienen, yo se las compartiré. No se preocupen. Yo creo que tenía una presentación. And I will share that with you. Pero by tomorrow, lo que voy a hacer es mandarles más ejercicios para el que quiera. Y el que tenga chancecito de hacerlo. Yo sé que pasan ocupados. Créanme, yo los comprendo perfectamente. Y les, también les admiro por este esfuerzo que están haciendo. ¿Ok? Así que study. Porque tomorrow it's your turn to talk. ¿Ok? Es el turno de ustedes de hablar hoy. Porque tenía que desarrollar esos temas. But tomorrow uh, we're going to continue. ¿Ok? Así que if you don't have any questions. Oh, you're welcome, Mariana. You're welcome. ¿Ok? If you don't have any questions. Let's go ahead and end the class here. Pero si tiene preguntas, si ahorita no, no las quiere escribir, me las pone ahí en el chat y cuando yo tenga chance con mucho gusto o me las trae mañana, apunta las dudas y las trae mañana and we're going to work them out, okay? So thank you very much for joining and I see you tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. Blessings. Blessings. Good night. See you as well. Bye, Good bye. night. Bye, bye. See you, Erika. Bye, bye.